Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. This is part two of a video on tying up the Bergman loom. Uh, my loom is a 1940s to 50s uh, Bergman countermarch loom and it is a little unique in its tie up in that it was originally designed to use uh, linen cord rather than Texalve cord. Uh, Texalve cord is usually what you use to tie up a countermarch loom. In part one of this two-part video, I showed how to tie up the treadles using Texalve cord. And you can see that over here. So now we're going to move to the other half of the treadles and tie those up using the linen cord in the method that was originally described in the uh, manual that came with the loom. The manual is a typewritten sheet of paper uh, that describes how you're supposed to tie it up. Anyways, um, the easiest way to do this is from behind the loom, so I will go back there. If you're interested in seeing uh, how I tied the left half of the treadles up with the Texalve cord, you can click on the uh, card up here in the corner and it will take you to that video. So let's get started. So, oh, here I am under my loom and I wanted to point out a couple things for you that make this job a little bit easier. This actually, there's quite a bit of room under here. So um, here are the linen cords that I will be using. To make the job a little bit easier, I have a couple tools. I have some bent needle nose pliers. I have a uh, threading, a textile threading hook or loop, and then I have a your standard slaying hook. This will get through the holes in the treadles to pull loops up through if I need to. Um, this can help get a uh, textile through itself, and this can help get the linen cord through the holes in the lamps. We're using an individual cord to go from the treadle down here up to either the lower lamb or the upper lamb. So to change the tie up here, we need to take out any cords that are in the lower lambs that we're not going to be using or take out the upper cords for the upper lambs if we're not using them. So we're only going to be using cords on the holes for the upper lamb or the lower lamb for a given shaft. Here is an example of that. On this shaft, I have, and this is a mix of Texalve and uh, the cording, which I'm going to change out. I'll replace these two Texalve cords. But I'm going to have all of these are on the lower lamb. So my shaft or my treadle 10 is calling for me to have shafts seven, just shaft seven rising. So I'm going to need to remove all of these lower cords except for shaft seven. Let's start though with 
the next shaft. So we did, or the next treadle, we did this treadle in the Texolf cord. This treadle we're going to do in the linen cord. I have two lengths of cord that I've used. A longer length, which is about two feet long, goes through the upper lamb. I've got another length that's about 15 inches long that goes through the cart through the holes on the lower lamb. It keeps it a little less messy um, underneath the treadles to use the different lengths of the cord. So for this particular treadle, this is the other half of my tabby. So I am going to tie up shafts two, four, six, and eight to rise, and um, one, three, five, and seven will lower. So I'm going to do the lower lambs first. And using the short cords, I'm going to thread these down through. And some of them are getting a little frayed. You can use that same little threading tool that we had uh, before with the loop on it. This little guy. You can use the same, uh, same loop. So we'll just, we can push it up from the bottom though this time. And thread that through and pull it down. Now the little beads on here are just to keep the cord from going through the hole. Anything large enough to, to keep it from going through that hole is doable. Um, I find that it's easiest if it's not frayed. I can just push it through with my hand. No big deal. All right. So there is uh, two, four, six, and eight. Now on the upper lamb, I am going to thread the longer cords through one three, five, and seven. But when I do this, I'm going to go through the hole and in the upper lamb on shaft one, I'm going to go behind shaft two, or I'm sorry, behind shaft one, and then down and let it hang. So this one is shaft three. If I can get that through there. Some of these are a little frayed. And then behind shaft three, lower lamb. There's five. Then behind shaft five. And I'm going to go ahead and use my little threading hook, just because that one is getting really frayed. All right, so that is seven. Okay, so now I've got these all um, threaded and I need to attach them to the treadles. So, so this is just a loop of linen cord and um, I fold it in half and I'm going to put it through the hole in the treadle 
and I can use either my little threading hook or I can use um, the slain hook again but I just want to get one end of the loop through the treadle hole and then I'm going to thread it through the other end of the loop so that it just creates a um, a secure loop. Uh, I'd like my knot not to be right there. Let's see if I can move it around. All right, that's much better. And the reason that I didn't want that knot there is because the way I attach these is with a snitch knot. I'll demonstrate the snitch knot on this one back here. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your thumb and your forefinger through the loop. You're going to open them up and then you're going to reach around and grab each side of the loop and then take the top of the loop and let it fall off your fingers over. Now you've created this loop and it will slide up and down. The cords that come from your treadle or from your lambs are going to go through this loop. So let's do that on this one up here. So I'm going to put my fingers through, reach around, and make that loop. It's a little challenging to see. Um, then I'm going to take the treadle cord or the cords that come from the lambs one and lamb two, and I'm going to put them together and I'm going to push them through that snitch knot. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to let the snitch knot close around them. And I tighten it up until my treadle is the height that I want it to be. Now, if I were to push on this treadle right now, um, this would just pull the cord, the cords coming from the lambs through that little snitch knot. So I need to secure it. All right. You can see I've got the snitch knot is tight around the two cords. These are the two cords hanging down. I'm going to take and loop this around and through here. and tighten it so it's just a little slip knot and I'll cinch it up close to that snitch knot there okay Now, when I push on this treadle, it's not going to pull out. You can see I'm pushing on it and it's not going to pull out. So um, that's what I am going to do with each one.
I have a couple different methods that I've used for these loop cords. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as they are secured and they're not going to pull out from underneath the treadle. So. Petal 7, I'm raising shafts 1, 6, and 7. So I'm going to put the lower ones in first. And then the upper one. And with this method, it's a little bit easier if you do uh, each pair before putting in the next pair. Just so that you don't get the wrong cord uh, connected to the wrong Cuddle hole. It's also easiest if you do them the ones furthest away from you and then move towards you.
there we have it. I'm not sure which is the better tie-up. Using the Texolve cord is a faster tie-up for certain. However, the shed that I get for, on this particular loom is not as fine-tunable using the Texolve because I'm limited to the spacing of the Texolve cord. Using the linen cords, I have infinite adjustability. Um, if I want to make this shaft um, a little bit taller, or this treadle a little bit taller, all I have to do is pull that knot, tighten it up a little bit, and put the uh, securing knot back in. And then I do that for each pair of cords on the treadle. However, it does take a lot longer to change your tie-up. Um, I will grant you that because I had to do some fussing around with changing uh, some of the Texolve over on this side out, uh, that did take a little bit longer, but I would say it probably took me twice as long to tie up um, the using the linen cord than it did with the Texolve. However, the Texolve is really messy looking and it does have some uh, possibility of catching on the hooks like I discussed earlier. So I'm still trying to figure out which one I like better. Um, that's why I decided to go half and half. Uh, and we'll just see what happens. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And I wanted to give a shout out to all the great people who have subscribed to my channel recently. I'm fairly new at doing YouTube videos. And I love the fact that you guys are interested in what I have to offer. So thanks. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about what I've posted here, please leave it in the comments and hit subscribe. Thank you. Have a happy weaving.